looking at dealing with our doubts, and we all have those. We have our ups and downs in our faith walk with the Lord, and today our psalm that we'll be uh, chanting and looking at is, is Psalm 25. You see our theme verse there on the bottom. To you, O Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, I lift up my soul, O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. So we're going to talk about where, do we, where does our gaze go? Where do our eyes focus when we're wrestling with our, our doubts? Uh, so may the Spirit bless us. Next Sunday is uh, LWML Sunday, and we're going to be looking at uh, strength for our weakness so that we can bear fruit for the kingdom. Uh, and want to encourage you, if any of you have mite boxes, bring those. We'll do an in-gathering of those. If you don't have one, you can stop by just past the Welcome Center there, and there's uh, my boxes there to throw your change in. It's amazing when all those nickels and dimes and quarters and pennies add up. Uh, several million dollars uh, over a triennium are used to support mission work, and we certainly thank God for the ministry of Messiah Lutheran Women as, as a part of, of the LWML. Uh, one other announcement, too. we. We are going to be changing the door codes uh, next tomorrow, actually. So if you need to get in with a door code, please call the office. We don't like to broadcast that, that out. But also just a reminder, if you are here and someone comes to the door and you don't know them, like this door in particular, just please ask them to go around either to the school, if they're here for the school, to go to the school office or to the church office. Uh, and then the other thing we encourage people to do is if someone comes in, like maybe they're even a repairman, that, that they get escorted to wherever they're going in the building, especially during our school hours with the kids here. We want it to be as, as safe as possible. So, uh, But when in doubt, just say, please, uh, uh, if you wouldn't mind going around to, uh, to the office door, the school office, that's the, the safest way, and then we can handle it from there. Let's see, I think that had one other one. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, our food pantries, uh, we have one outdoors there and one here sort of to collect things. Uh, they've gotten down pretty low, so if you'd like to bring some non-perishable items to help replenish the, the food pantry, you can just bring those next Sunday and drop them off uh, at either spot, either the one by the office or the one right here in the Narthex entrance. So, uh, And I want to say thanks to Scott Eisenhower. He's uh, subbing in on the organ for us, so let's stand and we'll join in our opening hymn, if now but trust in God to guide me him 750.
beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. And you may kneel, or you can be seated for our time of personal confession.
Almighty God, you exalted your Son to the place of all honor and authority. Enlighten our minds by your Holy Spirit, that confessing Jesus as Lord, we may be led into all truth, and that your truth will calm the doubts of our minds. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear our first two readings this morning. Our first, our first reading this morning comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verses 1 through 4 and 25 through 32. It's about the soul who sins and shall die. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this prophet concerning the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. For the injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, when a wicked person turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he shall save his life. Because he considered it and turned away from all the transgressions that he had committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not just. <clears throat> o house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, declares the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions lest the iniquity be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed, and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord God, so turn and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. Our second reading. <clears throat> It's found in the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 and 14 through 18. And this is Christ's example of humility. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord, one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only at, to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. Do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain, even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering from the sacrificial offerings of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If I should stand as we join in singing the Hallelujahs. <laughs> Matthew, the 20th 
21st chapter. and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching and said by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority Jesus answered I also will ask you one question and if you tell me the answer then I will also will tell you by what authority I do these things the baptism of John where did it come from from heaven or from man and they discussed it among themselves saying if we say from heaven he will say to us why then did you not believe him but if we say from man, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. And again, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Amber will be sharing the children's message with us. And again, please take a moment, if you would, and tear off the Connect cards and fill those out and drop those in the offering plates there as you leave uh, the sanctuary this morning. Well, good morning. Good morning. Um, I have a question for all of us. How many of you guys have heard the expression, I have to see it to believe it? Yeah, that's something that we might have even used ourselves. So let's see, if we say that we have, I'm gonna use Lucas as an example, because he's been learning how to ride the skateboard. So, say he came into the house and he said, Mom, I've got this brand new trick. I learned how to do this brand new trick. Well, I might, he was of course asking, you gotta come see it, you gotta come see it. And I'd say, oh, well, okay, I'd have to believe it to see it, maybe. So go out there and then sees and shows me this awesome trick. Do we always have to be able to see something to believe it? That's a question that we might have for ourselves. So what are some things that we can't see, but we believe and we know are real? The wind. The wind. Yeah, so that's a perfect example. So I have a fan here. It's not very powerful. But if I turn the fan on, you might see that it moves my hair just a little bit. So we know that whether then there's wind or a fan or there's air, we know it's real because we can feel it, right? If there is a loud noise, well, if I know how to blow on this thing. Um, it's the other end. No, it's, oh, it is. <laughs> Lucas's. Um, you believe that the sound is real because you can hear it, and that sound waves are real because you can hear them. Um, we can see the love that our parents and our friends have for us when we feel their love with hugs and their touch and how they treat us. We know that their love is real. Can we see Jesus besides pictures of him? Do we know that he's real? How do we know that he's real? Well, we believe what the Bible says. We feel Jesus' love in our hearts, and we can see Jesus in other people, and their kindness and their love for one another. We can't say that we've even seen Jesus with our own eyes, except through one another, and we still believe in him. 
We know what he did for us on the cross through his death and his resurrection. And we know that someday he will return to take us home with him. We trust in him. So doubts are a normal part of life, and we're not going to be able to get away from doubting. That's just something that is a part of our life. Um, but we can turn to him. We can turn to God by looking up to the Lord, looking away from the problem, looking into his word, and looking out to others. So all of these things are ways to bring us closer to God and farther away from our doubts. Doubts will still happen, but knowing what to do when we doubt is the true key. And the plan that God has for our lives, he can help to show that to us when we turn to him. So will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for always being there for us. Thank you for always being there for us. Even when we doubt, Even when we doubt, Help us to trust in you always. Help us to trust in you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amber. And we are going to, as we've been doing, uh, singing the Psalms for our hymn of the day. And this is uh, Psalm 25. So uh, Scott will play through the, the melody line once, and then I'll sing it once. And then you can join me, and then I'll sing the individual verses, and you can join me on the repeat of the refrain. Yes. 
grace and mercy and peace of mind especially uh, be with us and bless us today as we think about well, what do we do when doubts creep into our hearts and, and into our minds and uh, I'm going to ask you all to write some things down on the bulletin cover here in a few minutes so grab a bulletin keep it close and a pencil or pen uh, there's some pencils there in front of you if you want to do that if you're watching the stream uh, grab a piece of paper and a pencil at home so today we're going to talk about, uh, by the way, we all could have this name, Israel. Do you remember who had the name, what was the name of the guy named Israel before he was named Israel? Jacob, that's right. So Jacob, that was the name, you know, he was uh, given at, at birth. But in, in Genesis 32, we read the story of how he wrestles with God. And so God, at the end of that, said, no, I'm not going to call you Jacob anymore. I'm going to call you Israel, which uh, El is the name for God. Uh, Sarai is, it can be uh, striven with God as, you know, the literal, but we don't really use the word, I've, I've, stri I've striven with you, but we might say this, I've wrestled with you, or I've wrestled with God. So that's what I want you to, to think about today. Where have, or maybe even where are in the present, are you wrestling with God? Sometimes we wrestle with God's will. You know, even the, even the Ten Commandments, we wrestle with keeping them. And, you know, it's a blessing, isn't it, to come here and kneel and uh, confess our sins and to say, God, sometimes I've failed when I've even wrestled with obeying your will, your laws that you've given to me. Uh, do you ever wrestle with God's plan? Have you ever asked God, why is this happening to me? <laughs> or why is this happening to someone I love? Or why is this happening to our country? Or why is this happening to our world? Sometimes we definitely, I think, wrestle with God's plan. And yet, can we hear that in the reading for today, how uh, his purpose and his ways uh, are not always the same as ours, but learning as David did when he wrestled with him too to ultimately put his trust in the Lord. Sometimes I don't think it's that we wrestle with God's will or God's plan at all, but more times than not, I think we wrestle with God's timing too. You know, as if we say, well, we, here's, here's what <laughs> is, uh, we think you want to have happen, God. Now, chop, chop, God. Get with the program here. Let's get this thing going. Right? And sometimes God asks us to wait. Think about Abram and Sarah, who waited 25 years for the birth of their promised son, Isaac. And it wasn't as if God wasn't doing anything during that time of waiting. In fact, I think he really was preparing Abram, not just to be father, which is what the name Abram means, but to be Abram, or father of peoples, and he was strengthening him and, and growing him, and he still had his moments of doubt and wrestling. So, to me, again, the Psalms are so comforting because we see in the Psalms ourselves, it's like God holds up a mirror, and we see through David or the other Psalm writers, yeah, boy, they, they wrestle with some of the same things that I wrestle with. So let's look at it <clears throat> today. We're going to talk about, I'm just going to give you these four T words today. We're going to talk about turning to the Lord. We're looking up, we're going to talk about trusting in the Lord and looking away from our problems and focusing more on Him. We're going to look at spending time with the Lord and how the Word of God is such a blessing to us in the midst of our doubts. And then finally, to talk about talking about the Lord, sharing. And I think this is really true. One of the best remedies for doubt is actually to talk about our faith and what God has done with other people share it with them. But let's go back, <clears throat> excuse me, to the first one. To turn to the Lord or to, to look up and and in our psalm for today, you know, this is our verse on the bottom of the page. Will you read it with me? It's on the screen there too. That it's actually the first two verses. Let's read that together. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. So, we're talking about looking up, looking up to the Lord. And 
kind of amazing that David says, my soul, lift up my soul to the Lord. You know, we kind of think about our brains, our minds, you know, as the source of, of our thoughts and our hearts as the center of our emotion. But really, when you talk about our soul, it's kind of like our entire being, especially our spiritual self. And David says, he often talked to his soul. <laughs> you know, he says, soul, why are you complaining? So why are you doing this? And, you know, and he's really talking to himself. And he says, so I need to lift up my soul to the Lord. And you know what? That can be a challenge when life stinks. <laughs> that can be a challenge when you're hurting. That can be a challenge when, you know, uh, there is illness or death or other brokenness in our lives and in our relationships. And it's really very easy for us to forget to do this, to intentionally look up to, the, to God, to bring whatever it is that is weighing down our hearts and minds to the Lord. And, you know, sadly, sometimes we don't even do that with big things, but I think very, very often in life, we kind of think the little things, I got this, God, I don't really need you, I can handle it myself. And, and God says, but I still want you, I want you to lift that up to me, lift up your soul to me and all the little things in life and then the great big things in life. And that's a beautiful verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. So when you find yourself wrestling with doubts, when Satan tries to creep into your heart and into your mind, that's a good first step to stop and say, I need to focus on the Lord. I need to look up to God. I need to bring whatever this is and put it in his, in his very loving hands. So here's what I wanted to ask you to do. I thought about actually saying, I'm going to give you five minutes to write down as many uh, reasons to praise God, but uh, I don't want the sermon to go too long. So I'm going to give you one minute. So everybody grab your pencil or pen, and you can write it on here or somewhere else. If you've got your phone, you can open up the notes and just start typing in there. But I'm going to give you one minute and just start listing as many things as you can think of reasons to praise God. All right, ready? Go. Count how many you got. Does everybody have more than five? Raise your hand. Okay. Let me see. I got 14. Anybody more than 10? More than 15? Okay. Well, don't stop there, by the way. I encourage you to do that. In fact, uh, several months ago, I think I, I encouraged you to do this, and I have, a, I have it in my phone. It's called, not my praise list, but it's called my joy list. You know, and it's, uh, it came from uh, Grief Share, where uh, in the Grief Share session, Surviving the Holidays, it said that's a good thing to do. One of the ladies shared that when she lost her husband, and uh, she was particularly down, she sat down and wrote down things she was thankful to God for that brought her joy, and then she just stuck it in the drawer, and then she said uh, several months later when she was really in kind of a depression, she just happened to pull that drawer open and, and saw her, her joy list, her praise list again. And that's, so that's a good thing. That's a good way to lift up our soul to the Lord, to be intentional about doing that. Well, what else can we do when we find doubts creeping in? We can do what the second thing says, is to really trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And this also involves our gaze, but it involves looking away from our problems and looking specifically at Jesus. Because isn't that what happens when, when it, something comes up in our life, a difficulty or problem, it's all, it's, we get this tunnel vision and we can't really see much else. And we definitely 
may wrestle with seeing the Lord, that he is there with us. But he's given us that promise. And so, you know, verse 2, O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. But it's pretty easy for us just to focus on the enemy, whatever that might be, the difficult situation that we are struggling with, or our loved ones are struggling with. But here we want to keep our eyes specifically on Jesus. You know, I need to think about the Father as well, and the Holy Spirit, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm wearing a cross. Uh, I have a cross ring, and a lot of us have crosses. We have a cross here. There, the reason we have the cross is to remind us, think about all of the, what Jesus went through for us. So he knows what suffering is like. He knows what betrayal is like. He knows what uh, it is to be disappointed. He knows so many of the emotions that we have gone through. And he knows what it's like to be tempted as well. You know, Scripture says he was tempted in every way that we were yet. Thanks be to God. He was without sin for us. So, uh, trusting in the Lord, looking away from the problems, even if it's just for a minute in prayer, and, and speaking with the Lord, keeping our focus on, on Him. So when you wrestle with those doubts, we can turn to the Lord and look up. We can trust in the Lord and look away from our problems. When you find yourself wrestling with doubts, it's also very important to spend time with the Lord. And we do that with Scripture. With Scripture. I thought about that when, when Amber said, do we see the Lord? And I thought about this. <laughs> So we're having communion at late service. We do get to see the Lord as he comes to us in that miracle, you know, uniting his body with that bread and his blood with that wine, but, but also in the literal word where we get to hear God's words to us, his love letter to us. So if we find ourselves thinking maybe God doesn't love us, it's pretty nice to open up his love letter and to read his words and spend, spending time with the Lord in his word. And that's, you know, why worship is such a, a great way to start the week off. But that's not enough. So I really just want to encourage you to spend time, you know, in your own devotional time with God, some quiet time with him, so that he can strengthen your heart and really help you to trust, to trust in, in him. You know, and, and part of spending time with the Lord um, is, and David used this in the, in the song, he talked about waiting on the Lord. Uh, verse 5 says, Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. And David is talking about a special kind of waiting on the Lord. Not like this, not like, well, God, here's my plan. Um, and I was talking to Margie about this today. I said, because I was going to mention this, and she goes, yeah, basically, I hate that when you do that. Like, this, when we're getting ready to go somewhere, and I usually get, I don't have to put on makeup, and I know that shocks you that I don't have to put on makeup. But, you know, and I'll say, and this bugs her, so I'm not going to do it anymore. She said, I said, I'll wait in the car. Men, anybody else? I'll wait for you in the car. And she said, and, and then she said, you know what, really, what I really like is when you're waiting in the car and I haven't come out yet, and you start honking the horn. That's what I really like. Do you think that's true? No. <laughs> no. But do we do that with God? Sometimes we're, we're sitting there in our spiritual car going, ah, ah, ah. come on, God. Get with the program. You're not on my schedule here. And yet, the kind of waiting that, that David is talking about, it's not waiting for the Lord, you know, waiting for him to do what we want him to do. It's really waiting on the Lord. Like a waiter. You know, a really good waiter or waitress, they make you feel like in that moment, you're the most important. You're really important to them, and they really are concerned about your needs. And you can see that almost in an instant when a waiter or waitress comes, you know, to wait on us. And it's basically having that servant attitude to say, well, God, while I'm waiting for you, I also want to wait on you. I want you to be the focus, not just me and my plan and my timing, but really to learn to trust in you. So when doubts are creeping in, we can definitely turn to the Lord and look up. We can uh, trust in the Lord and look away from the problem and really say, Spirit, can you help me focus?
focus on my Savior and all that he has done for me? And can you help me to spend time with the Lord in his word? And then, like I said, I think this can be one of the most powerful things. I find it very often when I am going and making visits, especially hospital visits, that I find all of a sudden I have been ministered to more by the person that I went to pray with, you know, because I see their faith and they talk about their faith and how it is strengthening them. So the last one, when we find doubts creeping in, is to really talk about the Lord. When we find ourselves wrestling with Him, talk about Him. Tell them about what God is up to in your life. You know, there's another phrase, uh, uh, Amber had the phrase, I gotta see it to believe it, that's a pretty common phrase, but how about, how about this one? What have you done for me lately, right? And I don't know if you thought about that, but the little list that you wrote down, that's a pretty nice way to, to think of, about God, what have you, what have you been up to? What have you been doing in my life lately? How are you blessing me even in the midst of whatever it is that I am wrestling with? I still have many, many reasons to praise you. And one of his favorite ways for us to praise him is to use this, to share with others what he's done. And let me just share three in particular. And I don't know whether these, I actually wrote these down because I knew what I was preaching on today, but I hope you thought of some of, the, some of these too. First of all, David in this psalm talks about the mercy of God. And it's a little bit different word from like, have mercy on me, like, because I need forgiveness, you know, getting, not getting the punishment I deserve. This is actually the word in Hebrew, it means tender compassion. So how have you experienced the compassion of the Lord? How have you experienced his tender heart for you? How could you share that story with someone else who needs to hear that, that message of God's tender compassion? Or just his love. How have you been experiencing God's love? And I love the, how Amber said that. So often we see the love of Jesus through the loving acts of our brothers and sisters in Christ. So, you know, we can talk about that love too, but showing that love is a great way to put those words uh, into action, isn't it? And then, last week we talked about the blessing of this. Remember this? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We can always talk about we have experienced the forgiveness of God, that he loves us unconditionally, that he forgives us unconditionally because of what our Savior has done for us. So that's some beautiful words that we can share. So when you find yourself wrestling with doubts, uh, this is a good reminder to myself and to all of you too, to, to look up and turn to the Lord to look away from our problems and to trust in the Lord. To look in his word and really learn to, to uh, trust him and let him lead us and guide us, as David says in the psalm, lead me, teach me, guide me by your word. But also to look out. Look out, who are those people around you in your life who really need to hear you talk about the Lord and his mercy, and his love, and his forgiveness. That's when we are placing our doubts in the hands of the Lord. Look up, look away, look in, look out. Amen. And may his peace that passes all of our human understanding, may it guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand as we come to the Lord now with our prayer needs. If you look on the back of the bulletin there, you'll see some of the petitions. I do have a couple other updates uh, to share. Uh, Diane Ming asked for prayers for her uh, cousin on her mother's side, Chris Branscombe. He's been in the intensive care unit in Georgia. He uh, has double pneumonia. They thought maybe he had COVID, but it, uh, he actually tested negative for that, but he's still was dealing with that. So he was on a ventilator and is now off the ventilator, but still in intensive care. So lift up Diane's cousin, Chris. 
And then Margaret Field passed away uh, fairly soon for her. She had a, had a bleed in her brain and, and died on Wednesday, and we had her memorial service uh, yesterday. So I want to pray for her children and family, uh, Jack Jr. and Linda and, and John. And uh, Pastor shared the message on, on uh, John uh, 11, where Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. And uh, that's a good uh, reminder for us in the face of our doubts uh, and fears as well. So let us bring these prayer needs to the Lord, and then we'll pray together the, the Lord's Prayer. Uh, gracious Father, we give thanks for your holy word, uh, especially for the gift of the Psalms and how they echo the emotions on our hearts and minds and souls as well. And today, as we acknowledge the times in our in our daily faith walk where we wrestle with you, Lord, and your will and your plan and even your timing sometimes, help us to, as David did, to learn to put our trust in you, to turn to you, to keep our eyes focused on you, Lord, and all that you have done for us. But may we not only be encouraged by the gift of faith you have blessed us with, Holy Spirit, may we be bold as we talk about our Lord Jesus Christ and his love, mercy, uh, grace, and forgiveness. We do come to you, Lord, and pray that the, the victory over death and Satan and our sins that you won for us through your uh, death on that cross and your victorious Easter resurrection, may that give, continue to give comfort to the Varsodi and Yates families, also the Harms family, and the death of her brother Luke Hayden. We continue to pray for Shannon and her family mourning the death of her mother and Susan Michelle and the passing of her ex-husband Ray. And we add to those prayers uh, Jack and Linda and John and the rest of the Field family. And Lord, where you can use us as instruments of your love, hope, and peace uh, through our words and through our actions of love, uh, we offer ourselves to you. May you continue to be with those who are in need of uh, more work and employment. In particular, we lift up our members, Mike Patman and Bill Benjamin. Uh, we lift up our nation as, uh, again, those uh, healthcare workers on the front lines and during this time of pandemic. Also, Heavenly Father, we pray for peace in our nation as we approach our time of local and national elections. We pray for a renewal of health and strength according to your will, Heavenly Father, for those whose names we see before us today. For those recovering from surgery, Cindy and Susan, Karen and Loris. Uh, for those with ongoing health issues, Alice Giles and Al Seeliger and Jerry Mock. Uh, for those recovering from falls, Karen Woodward and Audrey Smith and Mildred Kiefer. We add to those prayers as well, uh, Diane's cousin Chris, that you might bring healing to his lungs. For those battling cancer, Greta and Carol Ann and Chanel and Kyle. And, uh, we pray of thanks, uh, prayers of thanks as Jenny is uh, responding to her new medications for her heart treatment. Be with Pastor Mark Carter as he battles uh, COVID and uh, others on our hearts and minds today, loving Lord. We place them in your hands as we join in the prayer you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. As you go on your way, may God go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you. 
beside you to befriend you, above you, to watch over you, and within you, to give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We close with, O God, our help in ages past. Thanks.